Good morning. My name is Father Doug Zimmerman. I'm the vicar here at St. Mary's Church here in Aylesbury. I'm delighted that you have joined us this morning in this act of worship, of praise, and of thanksgiving. In this world that is so divided and chaotic at this time, it is good that we come together to place our trust, our hope, and our peace in the hands of Almighty God. I invite you to make yourself comfortable, to grab something warm to drink, to place your heart in a place where you can come before Almighty God. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We'll now sing, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's Word. The first reading is from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord you power. 
reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there are about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the proclamation of the gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm very pleased to welcome our preacher this morning, Rena Mazzarera. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ coming on the first Sunday after the Epiphany. In Mark's Gospel, there is nothing about Jesus' birth or his youth. Mark starts right in with the good news of Jesus' baptism 
as the beginning of his ministry. First, there is the fulfillment of the promised messenger. The prophetic voice in Malachi chapter 3. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The prophetic voice in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. These prophetic words coming up in today's gospel, where we then see John the baptizer appearing on the scene as the one who fulfills the prophetic role as a forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John's role as the forerunner, as stated in Malachi and Isaiah, is revealed by John the baptizer himself. When he cries, after me comes one who is mightier than I, the one whose sandal shoelaces I cannot stoop down to untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. These words from John, they do not draw attention to him, but on the one coming after him who comes in the spirit of the Lord, whose ministry will be the epiphany of God's spirit, God's glory. If you look at Jesus' healing miracles, for example, the parables, yes, the one whose ministry will lead him to his death and resurrection. Then Mark quickly changes the scenario. We are quickly taken to the river Jordan where we find two prominent figures again. John the baptizer baptizing our Lord Jesus Christ. But this is not an ordinary baptism. Why? Because we see Jesus Christ as he comes out of the water. The heavens is torn apart and the spirit in the form of a dove descends on our Lord Jesus Christ. And the voice rips heavens open coming out with these words, words that reveal that valued, treasured relationship, that reveal Jesus' identity, commentation, and delight. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. According to Mark's gospel, these words, they are heard by Jesus alone. If you listen to the word, you, my beloved son, with you, I am well pleased. My beloved son, words that we will hear again at the end of Mark's gospel. When the, temp the temple curtain is torn apart at that very moment, when our Lord Jesus Christ breathes the last breath. Words that come as a confession from the centurion who says, truly this was the Son of God. These two dramatic events, they mark the structure, mark the gospel. But then, let's see, what then happens at the end of this baptism? Immediately, the Holy Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. Yes, what is it really about Jesus' baptism? What does it mean to you and me? In his baptism, 
Jesus Christ identifies with us. Going down the river Jordan to be baptized, Jesus did not need to be baptized. He had no sins to confess. Jesus expresses his solidarity with us by his baptism. Today, as we listen to the story about Jesus' baptism, we are reminded that Jesus Christ left his Father's glory. That divine nature emptied himself and became human. He humbled himself and was obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. Isn't it a privilege to be part of our Lord Jesus Christ? Through baptism, we are joined to Jesus Christ. We are joined to Jesus' life, to his death and resurrection. This is why we see at infant baptism, the parents and godparents, they promise to raise the child in the church because baptism is not a one-off event. Baptism is like joining the army. It is like joining the football team. You don't join and disappear. You don't join and go missing. You don't join and fail to participate in practice sessions. You join and become part of the team. You join and make your contribution to the success of the team, to the achievement of the team, of the team to the growth of the church. The message we get this morning on the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ is that we are baptized into something. There is a big change that takes place at baptism at whatever age, adult or infant baptism. Physically, it appears like just that splash of water, but actually it marks the beginning of a whole new life of forgiveness, of the presence of God's Spirit in us, of our union with our Lord Jesus Christ, and our participation in the bigger worldwide Christian family, the bigger worldwide Christian church. Yes, in this world where we have so many voices calling to our attention, demanding our attention, in the middle of those voices, in the middle of that noise, in the middle of the committing demands, there is God's voice stronger than the other voices, stronger than the, the storms, stronger than the mountains breaking open the heavens, delivering a word of love. God's word, beloved, to you and me on baptism. That is God's word. Yes, we celebrate this event of our Lord Jesus Christ every year during the Epiphany season. To most of us, this serves as a reminder of our own baptism. We may have made promises or somebody perhaps could have made promises on our behalf. But what is important is that this marks as our commissioning. It is at this point that we are continually called to jump in, to dive into the waters 
of mission, to dive into the waters of ministry. Yes, on baptism, each and every one of us is called, named, claimed, and sent out in different ways of our ministry according to God's gifts. The God who calls forth life from the ancient waters as we had in our first reading today, Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 is the same God who calls us to new birth in the waters of baptism. In the beginning, God created. God is still creating, redeeming, restoring, renewing. Baptism marked a new beginning for our Lord Jesus Christ. And baptism marks a new beginning for us all. The spirit that sits in the ancient waters in our reading from Genesis is the same spirit that descends on our Lord Jesus Christ in the waters of the Jordan River on his baptism and named him beloved. It is the same spirit that sends him out to the wilderness in the waters of baptism god calls us beloved and sends out to live a new birth in the wild and beautiful world that god so loved and we do this as children of God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you now please stand as we proclaim our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, standing together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and of the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as we pray for the church, for the world, and for God's kingdom to come. Everlasting God, we give thanks for this new day as we gather here this morning to focus on the baptism of our, of our Lord. Let us remember our own baptisms and our own calling to be Christians. 
May we be filled with such joy as we believe in you that our hearts overflow with love for you and for all who we meet along our journey. And help us to understand the mystery of the baptism of your Son. May we walk in your way, live our life for you, and be mindful of your presence day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we remember all countries where there is war or conflict, and pray that you'll mercifully look upon the sufferings of the people involved. We commend America to thy merciful care. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve their people through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray for our Queen and government and for all world leaders, sharpen their consciences and give them courage to make wise decisions, making wrongs right and meeting the needs of all who suffer, especially as the pandemic continues worldwide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray today for our friends and our families and our Christian community that united by our common baptism, we may always welcome the newcomer, the stranger and all who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives. We raise before you all who are sick, the bereaved, those with problems in their families, in their relationships, in their neighbourhoods or in their workplace. Give them a patient faith in their troubles and the knowledge that you share their sufferings with them. We pray especially for Kirsty and Isabel, Valerie, Helen, Dan, Jack, Julian and his mother Tina, Peter Atkinson, Doris, Sonra, Mark, Taylor Loren, Adrienne and Sally, and any who are known to us who have tested positive with the coronavirus and for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, Lord of unending being, we pray for those whose earthly lives have ended. We remember those whose anniversary of their passing falls at this time and for the souls of all who've passed away recently. We give thanks for lives well lived and have for happy memories. May they find rest in the eternal joy of heaven and let all who mourn their passing find comfort and peace. We especially pray for our sisters Joan Croker and Liz Sharp and their families. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for making us your children, for feeding us with the spiritual food which satisfies our longings and for the promise that you listen to our supplications and answer our requests. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Therefore, let us confess our sins. Praying together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Would you please stand? Our Savior Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. I invite you now to share in the spirit of Jesus' peace, whether that is in the Holy Catholic Church universal with everybody that is, also within the chat here or in the comments below. Let us be the people of Jesus, sharing in his peace, not just amongst ourselves, but in this world that so desperately needs it. And ascribe to the Lord, the honor do his name. Open your hearts and come to him with thanksgiving. Father, in Christ there, is, there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the offering of your church, and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, 
that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. And bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise.
Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. During this time of pandemic, as we are scattered, isolated, and kept from gathering around this holy table, it is our hope, it is our faith, and the teaching of the Church that Christ Jesus is always with us, as he promised he would be. We therefore receive this holy sacrament of Jesus' body and his blood spiritually. I invite you to make your act of spiritual communion, praying with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our notices this morning. In the midst of so much, God is on his throne and he is sovereign over all things. We are called to be a people of hope. We are called to be people of Jesus followers. And therefore, let nothing dismay us. 
we will rejoice in all things. And right now we are rejoicing in the amazing, con- amazing and continuing work on our St. Mary's building. Um, we rejoice that God has all of the finances worked out. We're just trying to keep up with what he's provided. So um, if you would like to participate in God's work here in this building, uh, please let us know so that we might uh, be able to dedicate your gift uh, to the restoration of this amazing building. Likewise, uh, in the description of the video below, you will find the a link almost down to the bottom. Uh, scroll all the way down for the parish giving scheme. Again, I would like to emphasize that this is the preferred, the most efficient, most beneficial way for you and for us for your support of the ongoing ministry of St. Mary's Church. Your generosity and cheerful giving are pleasing in the sight of God and go to make great benefit to the people here in this town and in this world. Um, We are continuing to be open for private prayer during the week between 9.30 and noon in the mornings. Uh, However, we also continue to keep in our prayers everybody who is uh, doing as they are asked in staying home. Uh, So if we can be praying for you, uh, you'll also find in the link below a prayer request link, which can also be used as a Thanksgiving report link um, so that we can share in everything that God is doing uh, in our lives here in the church. So again, in this brand new year still, we rejoice We give thanks, and we put our hope and trust in Almighty God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. May we all stand. Go in peace to love and save the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.